So the first thing you need to do is you need to collect all of the equipment you're going to need to do this practical. One of the things we're going to need is a pen. We're going to need a pair of scissors, either a pair of tweezers or a needle so you can manipulate the things you've got, some sellotape so we can stick all the pieces we cut out onto the paper, and we need some paper with all of the pieces of flour labelled onto there. We also obviously need ourselves a flower. The first step in a flower dissection is to get our flower into a workable state. So what we need to do is we need to take the flower here and we need to cut it off so that we don't need all of this long here. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut it off just here. So the flower is now removed from the stem. It's a lot easier to get to. We can move it around. We can have a look at the bits we need to have a look at. I've also taken this opportunity to remove the leaf and the stem and stick these onto our piece of paper with the sellotape. We're going to do that with each piece of the flower that we take off. The next piece of the flower we're going to look at is the sepal. This is the piece that protects the flower while it's all curled up and waiting to bloom. In this case, it looks very similar to the petals. And it's this outside one here. The inner ones are the petal, the outside one is the sepal. So I'm now going to remove that using my scissors and attach it onto my piece of paper. So I've removed the petal and the sepal. In this case, both of them look very similar. In other flowers, that's not always the case. For example, a rose is protected by green sepals, but its petals inside can be entirely different colours. Coming back to our flower, we've got all of the stamen, there are six of them in this case, are now exposed. These are the male parts of the flower and these produce the pollen. We're now going to remove these to expose the carpal, which is the female part of the flower. So I've got the stamen of the flower removed now. Now normally the stamen and the petals come in multiples of threes. We had six stamen and we had six sepals and flowers and petals together. The next thing we're going to do is we're just going to have a look at the stamen. It's made up of two parts, the anther up here which produces the pollen and the filament down here which connects it to the rest of the flower. And we can separate that using our tweezers and attach both to our sheet. So I've removed all six of the stamen. I also took this opportunity to split out the filament and the anther which make up the stamen. All of this has been added onto my sheet along with some pollen. Now you might not manage to get pollen, it just depends how developed your flowers are when you're dissecting them. Coming back to our flower, we're left with the stem which is connected to the ovary which is then connected to the style and the stigma. So I'm going to cut this top stigma off and then I'm going to slice the ovary in half so we can have a look inside. And both of those are going to be added to the sheet. With that done, our sheet is almost complete. Last thing, we need to take our pen and we need to label up the important bits of flour. For example, we could label the gametes. We could label the pollen as the male gamete and the ovule as the female gamete. We could also take this opportunity to label up the male and female parts of the flower.